Hey you guys, this is uh, Unit 5 Notes number 12, the shell method, okay? Um, go ahead and write down the FLT and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, you want to make sure that you have your calculator as well, as we will be using it very heavily, okay? Okay, so in our last lesson, we were learning how to find the volumes of solids of revolution, right? Um... So we learn two methods. It's really one, but it's two. Um, the disc and the washer method. And a washer is really just a hollowed out disc, right? A disc with a hole in it. So we're learning this other method called the shell method here, right? Okay, so you guys are actually doing a few things at once, okay? Um, you're learning the shell method, but at the same time, you're trying to figure out, well, why are we learning a different method, you know? And the whole idea here is, how do you figure out which one is the most efficient? It's like way back when you guys were learning quadratics, right? You learn how to factor. Um, you learn how to complete the square. You learn how to use the quadratic formula. But all of that pretty much boils down to, well, which method is best for certain situations, right? So... Here we go. That's what you're going to try to figure out, right? Not only what is the shell method, but how do we how can we tell what's the most efficient method there? So make sure that you can answer those two before you leave this video lesson here, okay? All right, here we go. So just to recap, the disk method, and you don't have to write this part down, is when you had a an axis of re revolution that was perpendicular to your rectangle, right? Perpendicular, don't forget that. Perpendicular. Okay, and this applies um, when you have a function that's hugging the axis of revolution, right? Notice how this rectangle here is completely hugging the axis of revolution. So there are no gaps here, right? It's a complete like cheese block, if you will, or a really short cylinder, all right? And then we found out that we can integrate so that we could find all of these disks all simultaneously, okay? It's pretty much pi r squared dx, okay? But one big takeaway is that wherever you're rotating, your rectangle is always perpendicular, Okay. Now, my question to you guys is, which scenario is easier for you when you have a horizontal axis of revolution or when you have a vertical axis? Okay, or are they the, about the same for you? Okay. Answer that real quick and press play. Now, generally, uh, for most problems, it's easier to integrate with respect to x, right? Because... Most of the time, our equations are already in terms of x. So naturally, we would lean towards problems that integrate it with respect to x. So remember, when we have a vertical rectangle, we know that we're integrating with x. That rectangle tells you everything, okay? When we have a horizontal rectangle, we integrate with y, okay? Which is why we have to remember that perpendicular phrase, right? Okay, then we found out that, well, what, what if you have disks that have gaps in between, that creates a little hollow area, right, or a donut, if you will. Notice how there's a little gap here. So what you would do is you would have to subtract out the volume of that tiny little disk that we have right here, okay, which is how we got this formula. But I told you guys to write outside squared minus inside squared. And remember, out and in um, is based on perspective, okay? It depends on where you're revolving, okay, where your axis of revolution is, okay? But again, a washer, even though it's called a washer, it's really just a disk, but hollowed out, all right? Okay, so I'm about to show you two simulations here. This is the one that you saw yesterday, or sorry, in the last lesson. 
where we're rotating this about the y-axis. So notice how the y-axis is vertical, so the rectangle should be horizontal. So then we have these discs at the bottom, but at the top we have discs that are hollowed out, aka washers, right? So here, knowing that it's a horizontal rectangle, we're going to have to integrate with respect to y, right? You see my mouse there? That was creepy. Um, I screen recorded this. This is why. Anyways, so as you move upwards, the hole becomes more uh, present there, okay? You kind of create this dome-like shape, um, but notice how this is a little bit rigid. It's bumpy because we only have a certain amount of sub-intervals here. But what if we were to squeeze in an infinite amount of discs? And this is what they're about to show you right here. It's a lot smoother. And again, this is how they 3D print, really. Okay, well, solids of revolutions at least. Behind all the coding, this is really what's happening here. Okay, so we have this dome like shape i can't really describe it but here's another scenario for you here's the same shape right here's the same uh, area under the curve but we'll still revolve it around the y-axis but what if we were to have vertical rectangular cuts how would that look like right so notice how we're cutting it vertically, even though the axis of revolution is at the y-axis. What would that do if we were to rotate this? So if you take a look at that green rectangle, if you revolve it, it looks like a shell. If you've uh, ever seen shell casings from a bullet or if you ever play with those Russian dolls where you know one stacks inside of the other, it's that same idea. So if you were to include all of these shells, notice how they kind of wrap over each other, right? They're showing you just half of the shell so you can see it, but then they'll end up closing all of them. Notice how you still kind of get this weird dome or bowl shape, okay? Again, this is a little bit bumpy, right? Because you only have a certain amount of subintervals, but what if we were to kind of smooth it out, right? It's the same idea. Okay, so what am I trying to get at here? There's two different ways that you could actually find the volume, right? So I'm going to show you an alternative way. First, you're going to learn how to do it, right? But then you're going to ask yourself, well, which way is better? How do I know which way is more efficient, okay? So here we go. Um, oh, here's another illustration just so you can see. Just so we can nerd out again. Um, so here, <clears throat> we have our X and Y axis, right? It's kind of like what we're used to looking at on paper. We'll go ahead and create our subdivisions. There's only 10 right now. It is kind of hard to see, but let me see if I can rotate this. There we go. Okay, so if I kind of tilt it a little... We're making a bunch of shells. Let me kind of just repeat that there. We're creating a bunch of um, shells all simultaneously. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase the number of shells and it kind of starts filling in with itself. So if you notice, it kind of creates like... I don't know what you call that shape. A lot of people use these cones to like run uh, run drills. Those tiny little like orange discs. For those of you uh, who run sprints, probably know what I'm talking about here. But notice how it's a bunch of shells stacking on top of each other, right? And the more and more subdivisions or subintervals I squeeze in, it starts to fill in itself, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's the whole idea. That's just to give you a good visual. Do you have to draw it out? Not really, right? Okay, so here we go. If you look at this one, this one rectangle right here in green, okay? If you were to revolve it, 
it creates kind of like a hollow cylinder, right? But imagine that this, this shell was kind of elastic, right? If you were to just take a knife and you were to just shing, slice it right there, and then roll it flat. If you roll it flat, it would look a little bit like this. So this is what happens if we roll it flat. Okay, so in this part, you do kind of have to understand the visual behind this, okay? So if you take a look here, and shoot, that was supposed to be blurred out. Um, if you think about it, the this is a rectangular prism. So for a rectangular prism, it's really just length times width times height. Okay, the length here, sorry, let's start with the height. The height of this cylinder is based on how tall it is, which is really just f of x. Okay, the width or the thickness, okay, the thickness is pretty much this right here. The width of that rectangle is, determines the thickness of that entire shell, okay? Which is really delta x right here. Okay, now the length. If you were to, and I'll try to illustrate this as best as possible. The length here in green, that's the length of that rectangular prism. Before it was unraveled, that length is really this. A circular shape. How do I find the length of that orange? Sorry, why did I say orange? That green circle, right? That right there. How do you find the distance around? That's really just the circumference. Okay. So again, you're trying to understand the logic behind how the formula comes about, right? So this is really 2 pi radius. If you remember way back, right? Circumference is just 2 pi radius or pi diameter, if you will. But radius we'll stick with. The radius here starts from the y-axis all the way out to that rectangle which is really just a distance of x. So this is really 2 pi x, which is how we get this down here. All right? Okay, so let me clean this up a little bit. Let me get rid of these arrows so you guys don't get confused. So this is our formula here. Delta x is the width or the thickness of each shell. If you want to squeeze in an infinite amount of shells, that delta x becomes a dx because you're going to make sure that each shell is infinitely small in thickness, okay? Because you're squeezing in an infinite amount of shells. And right here, it's going to be 2 pi x f of x. In fact, that 2 pi right here we could actually take out because it's a coefficient. So here, volume is really 2 pi integral of x f of x dx from wherever to wherever. All right? What the heck does this mean, right? So this is what I want you to write down. It's different from what you have in your book. Uh, but I modified it because it's shown to be a lot easier for students to understand, okay? So go ahead and pause here, write it down, jot down the illustrations as well, and then press play when you're all done, okay? Okay, so instead of X that I had up here, I wrote shell radius instead, okay? And instead of F of X, that really represented the shell height, okay? That's just easier to remember, all right? But what I do want you to pay attention to 
is notice how when we have a horizontal axis of revolution, we integrate it with dy. And dy implies that we have a horizontal rectangle as well. Okay? Over here, we had a vertical axis of revolution. But then we integrate it with x because we have a vertical rectangle here. Okay, so this is a little bit weird. So how are the axes of revolutions related to the orientation of the rectangle? Okay, what do you notice about these two pictures? How is the rectangle in relation to the axis of revolution? Press play when you're ready. You notice, ding, ding, you notice that they're parallel. So one can say that these are always parallel to each other. But oops. Okay? So two key phrases you guys want to remember with volume. Perpendicular, parallel. Right? It's super weird and silly, but it will stick. Okay? So remember, the rectangle tells you everything, right? Whether you're integrating with x or y. If it's vertical, it's x. If it's horizontal, you know it's y, all right? Okay. Notice how it's a little bit different from the disk and washer method because on the outside here, there's a pi instead, instead of a regular pi. So keep that in mind too. But let's try a few out. So first you're learning how to do it, and then we'll learn about efficiency, okay? Okay, here's example one. Go ahead and write it down in its entirety with the graph, and then press play when you're ready. Okay, so here I actually provided you the graph because the function here is definitely not a function that they expect you to sketch by hand, right? Sine of x, yes, but sine of x squared, probably not. So what I did there was I graphed it using a graphing calculator. You guys can do that too. So um, make sure that you guys reset your calculator, second plus 712. Go to your y equals, okay? And go ahead and type out sine of x squared, close. And since they give us an interval here from zero to square root of pi, that's pretty much telling you that your x min is zero and your x max is your square root of pi. So go to window, x min should be zero, x max should be the square root of pi. And when you hit graph, it looks really flat, right? Like this, we're something like that. So what we do is we go ahead and go back to window and we change the y max just so that we can get a better picture because we like to draw on the inside. The y max, we'll put it as 1. And the y min, we'll put it as, uh, let's do negative 1. That should be a better picture. Yeah, that looks a lot cleaner. <clears throat> so remember, y min, I'll write it down, should be negative 1. And y max should be that one. You should get a nice clean picture, but I provided it for you here anyways, okay? Okay, some things to note. Um, we want to rotate about the y-axis. So I'll do a little loop here on the y-axis. Okay, so for this one example, let's suppose that we wanted the shell method, okay? So here we have a vertical axis of revolution, and we want to make sure that it's parallel so that the vertical, sorry, the rectangles would have to be vertical as well. So I would go ahead and draw a sample here. All right, you could draw it anywhere, it doesn't really matter where. Okay, so here we go. So we're purposely using the shell method. You guys don't understand yet on 
you know, what's most efficient yet. We're just learning how to use the shell method to begin with, okay? All right, so here we go. V equals, remember, shell method starts with 2 pi integral. We know it's going to be dx because we have a vertical rectangle here, okay? All right, so we know we're going from 0 all the way to the square root of pi because they gave that to us right here. This is 0, and this is the square root of pi. All right? Okay, so in here... We have to plug in the shell radius and the shell height. Okay, we'll start off with the shell height. All right, so take a look here. Um, notice how if I were to draw different rectangles, the height of those rectangles vary, okay? The height of those rectangles are based on wherever that function is. So, for instance, if you're right here, that function on the curve, the y-coordinate, tells you how tall that rectangle is. But if you're standing here, that's how tall the rectangle is and so forth, right? So it varies based on whatever your function is. So we're going to put in our function for our shell height. So this is sine of x squared. Not that bad, okay? Now, listen very carefully, okay? And I'm very intentional with my words. The shell radius starts from where you're revolving towards your one rectangle. Actually, you know what? Let me keep those there. Okay. So we start from the axis of revolution to the one rectangle that you drew. I know I have four here, okay? But take a look. So if I start here, and I go all the way to here, that distance looks like it's about 0 0.8 something, okay? But what if you were to draw your rectangle elsewhere like this one? That would be about one point. 2-ish, but if you were to draw from here to here, that would be about 1.5. And if you draw here, that's like about 0 0.5. So doesn't it depend on where you draw it? Okay? So here's the thing. If you're starting at the y-axis, you're starting at an x value of 0. So wherever you travel and where you end up, that x-coordinate will be your distance, your shell radius. So wherever you drew it, and I'll keep my first rectangle here as the example, your shell radius from the y-axis, so from your where you're revolving all the way out, this will be x. Okay, really think about that, you guys. For this example, the shell radius is x. Because I know that from the y-axis on out, that's just the distance of whatever x is. Okay? All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to just go ahead and focus on our calculator now. So really, I'm concerned with just the setup, which we have. And now we're just going to calculate. So do this with me here. We're going to have v equals. You're going to type 2 pi. So second caret. How do we get to integral? Math, 9. We're going to go from 0 up top. We're going to put the square root of pi. We'll jump down to the integrand. Okay, so here it says x. So we're going to type x times, right? And instead of sine of x squared, I can just put y1. Do you guys remember how to do that, right? That's really just alpha trace 1 with respect to x, okay? Go ahead and type that out. Uh, let me compute this real quick. You should get 6.283 rounded. 
okay? If you got that, good. Let's move on. If you did not get that, text me right away so we can figure out what the syntax error is there, okay? If you're using the, um, the older version of the TI, you would do 2 pi math 9. It would say fn int. You would put in your function, so it would be x times y1 comma uh, x comma 0 comma square root pi close. So it's a little bit lengthier, but you can still get the job done there, okay? Um, okay, so here we go. Here's example two. All right. Write it down, then press play when you're ready. Now this one here, you should be able to sketch by hand, okay? And if you're telling me no, that's okay. But you got to refresh, okay? So if you don't remember how to graph x to the one half or x, then try to do your best to remember these because some of these uh, functions you're expected to sketch by hand, okay? Remember that there is a calculator and a non-calculator portion. So here we go. We have the x and y axis, okay? I know that x to the one half is the same thing as the square root of x, right? So that's just a hook. And y equals x is just something linear. So we got something that looks like this. And let me go ahead and partially erase. Um, since we're only focusing on that little region there, I'll go ahead and erase what's not necessary there, okay? So we have that. What else do we include, right? Um, so purple's the linear function, square root is the orange function. We want to go ahead and show that we're revolving about, in this case, the y-axis, coincidentally again. Okay? So... If we want to force the shell method, right, then the rectangle has to be parallel to your axis of revolution. Since your axis of revolution is vertical, your rectangle needs to be vertical as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and draw a tiny little rectangle. I have the convenience of zooming in, but you guys definitely want to... Draw it a little bit larger if you can, okay? So since that's a vertical rectangle, I know right away it's going to be dx, right? So here we go. v equals dx. We start with 2 pi, because it's the show method. We're going to go from where to where. Okay, so I'll do this with you on a calculator and without, okay? So if you were to type out uh, the square root of x for y1, just so that we're all on the same page, and x for y2, you could go ahead and hit graph. Okay, and you can calculate your intersections there, or you could just look at this. If you set your two functions equal to each other, it's pretty easy to see just by observation that the only time these two equations would equal each other is when x is 0 and when x is 1, okay? But again, you could solve it algebraically if you'd like. You can square both sides, right? x squared and then x squared minus x is equal to 0, and then you can factor it, right? Um, but it kind of just depends on what you're provided. So we know the bounds here. Are from 0 to 1. All we're missing is a shell radius and a shell height. Okay, you guys have had a lot of experience here. How do you find the height of this rectangle when it's between two curves? Press play when you're ready. Okay, when it's between two curves, you actually have to do top 
minus the bottom here. So in this case, the top function is the square root of x minus the bottom function, which is x. Top minus bottom will give you the height of that rectangle, okay? Okay, and same thing. From where you're revolving out to that very first rectangle, that is your shell radius. But we know that from the y-axis all the way out to that rectangle, the shell radius is just x for now. Okay? And that's it. Okay? So before you go ahead and start number crunching, make sure you understand the logic behind the setup. Because really that's 99% of what's important here. Okay? Okay? Once you do, go ahead and try to uh, attempt to type this one out here on your calculator, see what you get. While you do that, I'm going to work on mine as well. So 2 pi, math 9, from 0 to 1. We have x times, I would use another set of parentheses, the square root of x, jump out of the square root, minus x, and then close. Dx. So just so you guys know on my calculator, it looks like this. Just so you can check. It looks like that on my calculator, okay? So you should get 0 0.419 if you were to round it correctly. That's the amount of material you would need to create this three-dimensional shape, okay? Okay, cool. Let's keep going. So, okay. Here's example 2b. All right. It's actually the same two functions, but now we're going to rotate it or revolve it somewhere else. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Usually after one or two examples, students will see it. So don't worry if you don't see it right away. Um, but you've seen this type of pattern before from the previous lessons, okay? Um, so here we go. We had that square root function. I'll draw it a little bit larger so we can work with it. And then we had that linear function there, something like that, not to scale. Um, and then we're rotating about the line x equals negative 4, Okay. Think about this question, pause, and then press play when you're ready. But how do you graph x equals negative 4? Press play when you're ready. x equals negative 4, when it's x equals, it's always a vertical line. So let's pretend that this is negative 4. x equals negative 4 is right there. And this is where we're rotating, okay? Okay, so... We're going to force the shell method here, okay? Um, since the axis of revolution is vertical, your rectangle has to be vertical as well because it's para-shell. I know it's catching on with you guys. Okay, so here's what I want you guys to think about. This is very similar to the last example. So what does it change? Right? Press play when you're ready. Since it's still a shell method, it's still 2 pi in the front. Okay? It's still dx because it's a vertical rectangle. And it still goes from 0 to 1 because that region never changed. Okay? Okay, so here we have the shell radius and the shell height. The height shouldn't have changed either because the height of that rectangle is just determined by top minus the bottom. Okay, now listen to these words carefully. The shell radius starts from where you revolve towards the rectangle. So I'm going to draw this carefully. So from here all the way towards the rectangle, that is my shell radius. Okay, it's not x. So look, you guys know 
that always from the y-axis, because you start at zero, if you count all the way out here towards that rectangle, that will be x. But notice how that's not the same thing as the shell radius here. So how do you figure that out? Think about that lesson on washers, right? It's the same concept here. Think about how you would describe the length of that shell radius, that blue dotted line there. Press play when you're ready. Okay, we know that that green line is x. But from here to here, we know that that is a distance of not negative 4, but positive 4. Okay, because if this is the x equals negative 4 line, then if you count it all the way to the y-axis, that's just going to be 4. So if you take a look, the shell radius is the same thing as this here, which is really 4 plus x. I know some of you are really inclined to writing x plus 4, but don't do that, okay? 4 plus x, just for the sake of pattern. Okay, once you think you've understood that, go ahead and plug and chug. So I'll do the same thing. So 2 pi math 9 from 0 to 1. Okay, so I would do parentheses 4 plus x, close. Open up another one, the square root of x jump out of the square root, minus x, close, dx, okay? So just so you have an understanding, this is what I wrote on my calculator. Parentheses, and then parentheses 4 plus x, parentheses square root of x, jump out of it, minus x, close, close, dx, okay? Usually the, the biggest obstacle is just keeping track of all of your parentheses, okay? But you should get 4.608 if you round it correctly. Always round to three decimal places, okay? All right, let's keep going. So try this one here. Press play when you're ready. Go as far as you can, okay? Okay, so same picture sort of. We have our square root. We have our line. Okay, our linear function there. And now we're revolving about x equals 10, which is somewhere over here. I'm going to show the loop to show that we're revolving it. We're forcing the shell method, so I'm going to make it a vertical rectangle to keep it parallel to the axis of revolution. Okay, so here we go. V equals, I know it's going to be 2 pi. I know the region stays from 0 to 1. I know it's still dx. And I know the shell height is still top minus bottom, but the shell radius. So remember, your shell radius, make sure that you guys animate this here, okay? Your shell radius starts from your axis of revolution. So this right here is your shell radius. Okay? How do you figure out what the shell radius is? So we use the same logic, okay? We know that always from the y-axis to the rectangle, that is always a length of x, okay? So to get that green dotted line, we know that this entire thing is 10. From the y-axis all the way out to that vertical line is 10. So if I take 10 and I take away that x, I should get that green dotted line. That's like segment addition. Okay, make sure you understand that before you move on, okay? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and plug and chug this real quick. Ten minus x. Okay, I got ten point zero five three. Okay, but.
But again, the most important part here is figuring out that shell radius, you guys. Okay? Okay. Now to strategy. All right? You know, these volume problems are easy when you don't have to manipulate the equations. So if you take a look, we go back to our disk and washer here. Let me try to find it. Um, well, where'd it go? Okay. Things got really confusing when you had to change your equations in terms of y, right? Or in general, when you had to change your equations. That's when it got really complicated. Okay. Well, relatively complicated, I should say. It's a lot easier when you don't have to change your equation. So here's what I'm trying to get at. Whatever your equation is, right? however it's written at the beginning, usually that's the best way to go. So here's what I mean. If your equations are in terms of x, then you want to favor a vertical rectangle because then you won't have to change the equations. If your equations happen to start off in terms of y, then you want to favor a horizontal rectangle because then you won't have to change the equation again, okay? So to answer the question of efficiency, you use the method that does not require you to change the equation, okay? So here's what I'm trying to get at here. Let's draw this picture out. Same two functions. We got our square root. We got our um, linear function here. Okay. And y equals negative 3 is a horizontal line. Okay. So look. Here's what you do. A little bit different from how you approach this, okay? You look at your equations, it's already in terms of x, so you purposely force it to be a dx. And the only way you do that is if you have what type of rectangle, right? You have a vertical. So you purposely do that. So you figure out the rectangle first this time, okay, instead of second. And then you take a look at the orientation, okay? How is the axis of revolution related to the rectangle? So here I noticed it's not parashell, it's actually perpendicular, okay? So I'm using a disc or some type of washer here, right? So I'm not going to use shell, because if I use a shell, I would want it to be parashell, and I would have to use a horizontal rectangle, causing you to change your entire equation in terms of y. So here... I am going to opt for the washer method. I wouldn't use disk because there's a clear gap right here in between. Okay, So in this case, the washer method is most efficient. The washer method starts off as v equals pi instead of 2 pi. The region is still from 0 to 1. But this is where you have out squared minus in squared, right? So it kind of reinforces what you've been learning. The outside starts from where you're rotating to where you're about to go out of the region. That is your outer radius. And right where you're about to go into the region, that is your inner radius. Okay? From here, you should be able to figure out what the outside and inside radius is. Pause to figure it out and then press play when you're ready. Outside should be 3 plus that square root function. The inside should be 3 plus that x function. 3 being this here. Okay, 3 plus whatever else we needed. And then you plug and chug. I'll let you guys figure that one out there. Okay, had this been the shell method, you would have had to change your equations in terms of y um which sometimes or in most cases makes things a little bit more challenging okay you should still get the same answer but uh you would have to pay close attention to what changes okay all right let's keep going here okay
Okay, try this one out. Think about which method is most efficient. Press play when you're ready. Okay, so here we have that square root hook. We have that linear function. We have y equals 5, which is a horizontal line somewhere above the x-axis. So this is y equals 5, and this is where we're revolving. Okay, uh, since the equations are in terms of x already, I am going to favor a vertical rectangle to get a dx here. But if I take a look at the orientation of my axis and my rectangle, it's perpendicular here. So I'm going to use either a disc or a washer, not the shell. But in this case, since there is a gap in between the rectangle and the axis of revolution, I know that the washer method is best. Okay? So this is going to be v equals pi, not 2 pi. 2 pi is shell. The region didn't change, 0 to 1. I know it's dx. And I know it's outside squared minus inside squared. Okay. Outside, you start from the axis of revolution. When you're about to go out of the region, that is your outside. When you're about to go into the region, that is your inside. How do we figure that out? Press play when you're ready. So the outside should be 5 minus your linear function. And the inside should be 5 minus your square root function. And then you plug and chuck. Okay? Once again, if you happen to use the shell method here, you would have to be para-shell to the axis of revolution, so your rectangle would be horizontal, meaning that everything would have to be in terms of y, which makes things a little bit more inefficient. Okay? Cool. Let's uh, do this one here. Do I have a picture? Okay. Okay, so here, let's draw this one out here. You guys can use your graphing calculator if you want to. Um, x minus x squared, you should know, is an upside-down parabola of some sort. y equals 0 is really just the horizontal line, the x-axis, and x equals 2 is some vertical line. So... We have a parabola that looks a little bit like this, and I'm exaggerating a little bit so that I have space. Uh, y equals 0 is right here, and x equals 2 is some vertical line right here. You have to draw your picture, okay? Okay. So we're rotating about here. Go ahead and try this one out. Use the method best for this problem. Press play when you're ready. Now, if you're not sure which method to use, remember you take a look at your equations. Your equations are in terms of x, so you want to favor a vertical rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a vertical rectangle here. Okay, so notice how the axis of revolution is para-shell. Right, um, to your rectangle. So you know you want to use the shell method. Shell is best here. So shell method starts off as v equals 2 pi from the region starts from 0 to 1. Right. I know it's going to be a dx. I know it's going to be shell radius times shell height. Okay, the shell height is determined by the top function minus the bottom function, right? Which is x minus x squared minus the zero. The minus zero is really not necessary, but just to show you the pattern, okay? The shell radius, when you illustrate the shell radius, remember you always have to start from where you're revolving, from the axis of revolution. So this blue dotted line right here is your shell radius. 
how do you figure out what that shell radius is? Okay, I know that from the y-axis always out towards the rectangle, that will always have a distance of x, okay? I know that from the y-axis all the way out to here, that's automatically 2. So to get that dotted blue line, that's really just 2 take away the x. And then you plug and chug. Okay? I'll let you guys figure that one out. All right? Here's where I'm going to leave you guys. So, is it this one? Okay. So, sometimes you have a choice, right? So, just by looking at this problem, looking at this equation, I know that I want to favor a vertical rectangle. So, in my head, I'm thinking of vertical rectangle. We're not going to draw this whole thing out. If I'm rotating about the y-axis, that is parallel or parashell to that rectangle. So, I know that the shell method would be best here. Okay? Okay, so here, if you take a look at this equation, you don't have to write it down. Um, here, the picture provided, notice how the axis of revolution and uh, the rectangle are parashells, so shell method would be best, right? But what if you were stubborn and you wanted to use a washer method? The washer method would require you to use a horizontal rectangle, right? which means that everything has to be in terms of y. If you take a look at this equation here, not all equations can be solved. So if you notice right here, there's really no virtual way of getting x by itself. Like there's no algebraic way of doing this. So that's why it says here shell method is necessary because you can't really, you don't have enough power to change that equation okay uh with without technology at least okay so big thing before you leave um favor the rectangle based on the equation okay Look at the equation first. If it is in terms of x, you want a vertical rectangle. If it is in terms of y, you want it in terms of a horizontal rectangle. Okay? So you're not even looking at where it's revolving yet. Okay? Just look at the equation and then think about what type of rectangle you need. And then, then look at the axis of revolution. Look at axis of revolution. And then your favorite question, is it perpendicular or is it parashell? That's really your thought process, you guys. Favor the rectangle based on the equation. Now that you have a rectangle, look at your axis of revolution. And how are they related? Are they perpendicular or parashell? The moment you can answer that last one, you should know which method to use. Okay? Go ahead and try it out. Um, as of now, whatever problem you get, you use whatever method is most efficient. You don't have to always use shell. You don't have to always use disk and washer. Okay? Use whichever method is most efficient for you. All right?